Hey everyone, this is Khaled with Invesp. This channel is all about helping you improve your site conversion rates so you can make more money online. Now we do that by sharing the best tips, techniques, and strategies on how to do so. If you are new to this channel, I'd love for you to like and subscribe. Let's jump right in. So here are my 12 tips for creating the best online forms that will help you persuade visitors to fill out this form. As usual, I'm gonna keep my best tip and my best secret until the end. So make sure that you watch all the way. Number one, start with a powerful headline. Notice that this is something that is not part of the form. However, it really plays an important part in convincing people to fill out the form. What are the benefits that people are gonna get from filling out the form? What are the promises that you are making them? Lots of times I look at forms, they start with a very poor headline. Contact us today, fill out this form. No, 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 no. Let's throw this standard headline out and let's come up with a powerful headline on the end result that your visitors are going to get. Let's take an example. Let's say you are a lead gen type website and you run some sort of digital marketing. Instead of saying, fill out this contact form, how about start exploding your sales today? Start increasing your SEO ranking today. Improve your conversion rates by filling out this form. So we focus on the benefit of filling out that form. A very powerful headline. I like to use some bullet points under that headline to really emphasize the value that the company brings. Number two, add credibility. Lots of times people add credibility, they add social proof throughout their website, but when a visitor gets to the form, those credibility factors, those credibility signals don't exist and they don't display them on the form page. No, we need to remind visitors why you are choosing to contact us, why we are credible, why we are the best option to help you solve the problem that you have. So if you have some of those social factors, if you have some client logos, whatever you have, put them in a good way, present them on that form page. Number three, think about the form length. You cannot imagine how many forms I look at and I look at the number of fields that are there and there's absolutely a horrendous number of fields. I have seen forms with 15, 16 different fields in them. And I always ask the marketer, do you really need all of these fields? And lots of times I get the answer, well, not really. I don't really need all of them. Somebody added them at some point a year ago or a couple of years ago, I don't know. Even worse, sometimes I ask them, are you doing anything with that information that you're asking visitors to fill out and they'll say, no, I'm not doing anything with that information. Sometimes it is lazy marketing because you can get some of that information by doing a little bit of research, correct? You can look at the information that the visitor had filled out and you can just go to their LinkedIn profile and get a lot of that information from them. I only need the name of the person, their email, phone number is questionable, and the name of the company or the website. That is the absolute minimum. Every field that you add to your form means you will have lower conversions. So just keep that in mind. Number four, make sure that your required fields are clearly marked and think about those required fields. Do you really need them? And as visitors are filling out those different fields, they need to understand that this is a required feel. So make sure that you do that. Number five, let's talk about form validation. You will need to validate the input that the visitor has. Now, typically I see two problems with field validation. Number one, some developers start the field validation as somebody's inputting their information. So let's say I have a field in the form that asks people to fill out their email. I'm just starting to type out my email and I'm filling KHA and the field validation is already kicking in and tell me that there's a problem with my email. Yes, there is a problem because I didn't finish typing up my email. Let's wait until the visitor fills out the field and clicks out of it and then you can do validation. Another problem with field validation that I see quite a bit is that you submit a form, form comes back to you telling you that there is an error, especially when it's a long form without highlighting the particular area. So it will tell you that there's a problem, but it doesn't tell you which fields you have a problem with. Even worse, sometimes there are multiple fields with multiple problems in them, which can cause a huge issue because now how do you highlight those fields? I was just placing an order with GoDaddy just to register some domains and I filled out my credit card information and I'm ready to submit. I filled it out completely. I was ready to submit and I could not find the submit button. There was an error, but they didn't tell me what the error was. And I was just looking at the page puzzled. I'm like, what, what just happened here? 
why isn't there a submit button? I went back to the credit card area. It turns out although they've saved my information, they required me to fill out the CVV again. Nothing on the page told me that I need to fill out the CVV. There was an error, but was not clearly highlighted. That is a major problem. And I wonder how much business that they are losing because I was patient enough to look through that credit card form again and figure out that that field is missing. I'll just mention an additional tip over here. If you use CAPTCHA, really think, do you really need to use it? For many, many years, we refused to use CAPTCHA on all of our forms because we just wanted to fill out the form and then we can manually go through the different form submissions and mark them as spam or not. Lately, I had to submit and agree with our marketing team that we're getting a ton of spam submissions. So we added CAPTCHA. However, we only display CAPTCHA for visitors coming from particular countries. Number six, confirm inputs. Now, this is an additional bonus. If people are filling out a particular field correctly, you can highlight that field in green, telling people that you've inputted the information correctly. It's an additional bonus. It's a nice thing to do. It's not a must do, but I think it takes your form to the next level. And this is very powerful, specifically if you have account creation forms where people have to fill out passwords. So it will be nice to know that whatever password I've used have actually met the criteria that you require on your website. Now, a side bonus as well, if your form requires people to create a password, make sure that you state the requirements very clearly and you highlight the different requirements that are met as user are inputting those different requirements into the form. Number seven, autofill the forms as much as you can. If you already have some information about the visitor, you might have the city that they're coming from, you might have the country that they are coming from, you might have some of their personal information saved because they are an existing user on your website. Don't ask them to fill that information again. Autofill it from your CRM, from your platform, it will make their life easier and they'll appreciate that. Number eight, make sure that you state very clearly your privacy policy. Nowadays, visitors expect that their information is not gonna be sold, it's not gonna be shared with another third party. If you have a policy otherwise different than that, make sure that you state that clearly. If that is your policy, make sure that you state that clearly in a good language that people can understand that assures them that information is not gonna be sold or shared with anybody else. Number nine, make sure that your CTA is very clear. I should be able to tell the CTA very clearly on the page. It should stand out. It should have the right size and it should use the right language. I hate CTAs that use the word submit. Let's just use something a little bit more creative. Get started. You know, contact us today. Start on your journey. Just get a little creative. Spend five, 10 minutes thinking about the text that you're going to use in your CTA. Number 10, do watch session recordings for visitors who are coming to the page where you have your form. Watch at least 50 or 60 sessions, both on mobile and desktop, and try and figure out if visitors are struggling and filling out some of those fields. Number 11, do install some form of form analytics software. And the power of form analytics software it will show you if there are specific fields where people drop off. 100% of your visitors are filling out the very first field, but then there's a drop off in the second field or the third field. That is a gold mine because then you'll need to ask yourself, why are people dropping off over here? Are we asking them for too much information? Can we remove this field all together? And number 12, my secret that I promise, Split your forms. If you do require a lot of information from your visitors, start with the very basic information, basic contact information in step one. All the other additional information that you might need should go to a step two, an additional form that people can fill out. The beauty of doing this is you already have the visitor's contact information. You have their name, you have their email, you have their phone number, and they have their website maybe. You already have that. And even if they choose not to fill the second form, you already have a way of contacting them. So even for us at Invesp, we'd like to split the forms into two-step process. If somebody chooses not to fill out the second step, no big deal because we can still contact them. We can do a little bit of research on LinkedIn. I already have their contact information. The conversion rate for us on the first step on the contact us page is around 15%. 
the conversion rate on the second step. If somebody fills out the first step, they've already committed. The conversion rate is close to 80%. So most people will be willing to fill out that second step if they are serious. Some companies would not fill it out, but it's no big deal because I already have their contact information. Can I add another tip for those who have watched us yeah. all the way? If you use some sort of a calendar software, a Calendly, a HubSpot, where people can book appointments directly, consider adding that on the very first page of the form, kind of in parallel to the form, or on the second step, if you are using a multi-step form where people can book the appointment directly, that might help you increase your conversion rates.